All right, there we go. Good to see everybody in church tonight. And let's all stand, grab a hymn book, turn to hymn number 444 when you find your place. Stand with us if you're able. I've got a mansion just over the hilltop. Hymn number 444. Aren't you glad the Bible says we're getting a mansion and not a not just a row house? Hallelujah. Thank God for row homes. I got one. But I'm looking forward to a mansion one of these days. I've got a mansion. Hymn number 444. Here we go. Sing it out tonight all together now. I'm satisfied with just a cottage below. pages hymn number 435 when the roll is called up yonder i'll be there listen it's good to be saved life down here is great but one of these days we're going to get some of the benefits of heaven and uh, we're going to get to some of the benefits of salvation and one of those is heaven rather and so one of these days we're getting out of here we'll get up there i'm glad my name is on the roll 435 sing it out here we go tonight when the trumpet of the lord shall sound and time shall be no more and the morning breaks eternal bright and fair when the same of earth shall gather over on the other shore and the roll is called up yonder i'll be there sing it out when the roll is called up yonder when the roll is called up yonder when the roll is called up yonder And the glory of his resurrection share when his chosen ones shall gather to their home beyond the sky. Yonder I'll be there. Oh, when the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. 
Let us labor for the master from the dawn to setting sun. Let us talk of all his wondrous love and care. Then when all of life is over and our work on earth is done, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, sing that last verse again. I've been singing this song my whole life, but I just really thought about those words in that last verse. Let us labor for the master from the dawn till setting sun. And this is what convicted me. Let us talk of all his wondrous love and care. I spend a lot of my time talking about a lot of different things, but the majority of what I talk about should be him. His wondrous love and care. He takes great care of us. And so I want to do that. So let's sing that again. Think about the words as you sing. Here we go on the last verse. Let us labor for the master from the dawn till setting sun. Let us talk of all his wondrous love and care. Then when all of life is over and our work on earth is done. And the road is called up yonder, I'll be there. Oh, when the road is called up yonder. Let's keep singing about heaven here. 429, when we all get to heaven. 429, 429, sing the wondrous love of Jesus. The only reason I'm going to heaven is because of his love. Got nothing to do with me, his mercy, his grace, his love. So sing it out tonight on the first. Here we go. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. church gonna be even better to be in heaven one day can't wait till that day comes looking forward to it every single day i have uh, i've done all that i want to do on this earth i can't wait for the lord to come back and take me home but i while i'm here i want to make sure that i am faithful to him 
Uh, the Bible says the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us. We're not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And so the Lord's leaving us here because he wants us to win the world to the Lord Jesus Christ, to tell them about Christ so that they can have that relationship with the Lord. And we all know that relationship has made all the difference in our life. Nothing, nothing ever changed my life like Jesus did. Temporarily, sometimes things could occur, and it would be like, wow, that was awesome. But then it always ended. And I thank God that Jesus never ends. It's very, it's a contentment that is hard to explain. But the Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. And boy, when I tasted, thought he was pretty good. Amen. And didn't, then never have never looked back on it. And I thank God I'm not stuck in a religious institution. Uh, practicing good works and practicing uh, doing things to attain heaven or to attain the Lord because we don't have to do that according to the Bible. We we it's a done religion. He did it all, and we just have to trust in Him. And so, what a what a blessing it is to be able to sing those songs. Good to have everybody here. Good to have some visitors in the house. What'd you sit down for, brother? You tired? Met these guys outside, and they're a blessing, amen. And uh, I don't know if their parents know where they're at, but I guess we 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 know where they're at. So it's a blessing, and so uh, and so it's a great thing to have them here, and good to have other visitors alike. Thank you for coming. Let's pray. Let's ask the Lord to touch us tonight. Uh, I'll give you a quick story about Bible Baptist Church, a church we started over on uh, Frankfurt and Castor. Uh, on Sunday afternoon, Sunday morning, a lady came, and it was a grandmother of one of the ladies, Jasmine, and that grandmother got saved that day. She trusted in the Lord, turned to the Lord. It was good. She was crying. She wanted someone to talk to her about salvation or the deliverance that God can only bring, and she gave, gave her life to the Lord, and she came back last night. And so that was a blessing to be able to talk to her. And she's got a son named Nelson that is uh, stranded under the L sometimes, having some, some issues. So let's pray for Nelson. And this, this lady's name is Charlene, very nice lady. And then we had a man come uh, last week uh, or Sunday that Brother Paul had knocked on his door about five or six weeks ago named Rudy. And, man, Rudy is the epitome of a Philadelphia guy. And I say that in a great way. He just, he's just all Philly. And he talks like a guy from Philly. He really reminds me of Brother Frank and Miss Kim in that aspect, just, just the, the lingo, the way they're talking. And so me and him have been talking. And uh, he came to church on Sunday. And he wanted to come a few, about a couple Wednesdays ago. And he showed up. And Brother Eustace was outside. And Rudy was wearing shorts and a T-shirt. And he said, you know what, I got to go home and get my medicine. And then later on, Rudy told me, he goes, I felt intimidated. I want to come into church in shorts. And I said, Rudy, God doesn't care what we wear. Sure, God, I, I, you know, God just wants us to be here. And it's all, he, he, God works on the inside. And, 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 and that's what he does. And so I told him, I said, Rudy, don't, don't worry about that. And he came Sunday, and it was great. He loved it. And then he calls me yesterday before church. He goes, Pastor, he calls me Burton, and I have no problem. He goes, Burton, wait till you see me tonight. And I go, what do you mean, Rudy? He goes, Man, the Lord gave me some new shoes. He's 56 years old, but he I'm just telling you, it's awesome. And I'm like, oh, that's great. I love when the Lord gives me new shoes. I like new shoes. We got that in common. And he goes, you're going to be real happy. And see, I said, Rudy, I don't care what you wear, man. He goes, well, right now I'm asking the Lord to give me a suit so I can be like you on Sunday. And I said, well, you don't have to be like me, but if you want to wear a suit, God will give you a suit, do whatever they He showed up, man, with these shiny shoes on, some slacks, and, 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 uh, and, a, and a, a nice shirt. And, 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 man, he was just smiling from, from ear to ear and heard the word last night and was enjoying it, texting me this morning. And just a blessing to meet people, man, that are that are hungry for, for 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 something in their life. And listen, most people don't know what they need when they don't have the Lord. It's just something you just never would dream of. You know, you think it's religion. You think it's everything that we thought. You know, it's it, it's not what I what what you think it is. And when you get that relationship and you get tied into Him, where you can talk to Him and where you can listen to Him and He can speak to you, then man, He just picks you and puts his on his puts you on His shoulders. And starts walking with you. We've all seen that that painting or that thing. It's a little uh, little uh, poem that says "Footprints in the Sand," and it says, you know, there was two two sets of footprints, and then and then he asked the Lord, "What was the one where there was one set of footprints?" And he said, "Well, that's the one when I was carrying you." Man, and it's something God does carry us, and I thank God for that. And so, what a blessing! Matter of fact, brother, brother Dale, I want you and uh, and the kids to come sing. Uh, he will carry you through, and then we'll get on with the rest of what whatever else we're going to do. Can you do that one? Is that something you play, or does Miss Candy play that? Okay, can, can, who sings that? All you guys. Okay, let's do that. Okay, let's do that.
Are you guys good with that? I do that to them all the time. And listen, we, we say, well, they might need to practice. Now we might just pray. Uh, and they say, we, we're not here to perform. Uh, we're here just to see what the Lord does. And I was just thinking about how he carries us. Man, it's a good song. Listen to the song. Let's pray tonight. Let's ask God to bless. I'll let your legs be rested. Everybody, this, this looks like you're about to go down. Amen. We're standing up for a long time, Pastor. Now nah, we'll be all right. And so let's pray. Let's ask God to bless the service tonight and to meet with us. I've been praying most of the day for this service and for the Lord to show up and to speak to us and help us. And I believe that he will. And so let's be faithful to pray to him and talk to him also. Father, we love you so much. Thank you for loving us, Lord. Thank you for bringing us here tonight. Thank you for the rain, Lord. Thank you for the, uh, the, the, the coolness in the air, everything that you know what, what we need. And sometimes, Lord, we're, we're ready for summer, we're ready for spring. But Lord, you do it all things well. And, Father, we pray that you would do the same thing in here tonight. Each person in this room, uh, some of us might be tired from working all week and, and been a long day maybe. But, Lord, I know you can strengthen and I'm thankful that you carry us. I'm thankful for the young people that are going to sing this song and for what you've done in their life and what you've done in my life through them. Uh, good music is, is valuable. And so I'm very thankful that we have that and we are able to listen to that. So, Lord, I pray that you'd bless them. Pray that you give them strength to sing it, the memory to sing it, the, the words, however else, whatever needs to be done, God, I pray that you do it for them and, and help them. Lord, minister to our hearts tonight. Help us to think about the words. Help us to get close to you tonight. Help us to continue to pray for the service. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. Thank you for standing. the kind of news that you hoped you'd never hear when you're chasing down a dream just to watch it disappear when somebody that you love turns and walks away and they leave you standing there with shattered faith you don't have to pick up all the broken pieces Try to cover up the scars You are loved and you can always run to Jesus Just as you are He will carry you when you can't go on He will be your strength when your strength is gone He will lift you up He will be enough to get you through When the road is long and you want to quit Cause you think you got nothing left to give you can fall apart, fall into his arms. 
thousand ways I've received it. it never runs out, it never grows cold Just when I thought I'd reach the limit Keeps pouring out, I'm drowned in it It won't shut me out, it won't let me go So I'll keep singing on and on Of this grace I'll keep singing on and on of this grace I'll keep singing on Some may say that it's foolish But how can you ever grow tired Such goodness I just know that I must sing I won't sing A drop of his grace never wasted Just when I thought I reached the limit, it keeps pouring out. I'm drowning in it. It won't shut me out. It won't let me go. So I keep singing on and on. A disgrace, I'll keep singing on and on. A disgrace, I'll keep singing on. All right. Well, thank you for the grace of God. And what it does, we're going to talk to our missionary tonight, our missionary out in Oklahoma, uh, Brother Art Thomas, who heads up the Victory Ranch, took that on a couple of years ago. Uh, he's a good brother, good friend of ours, good friend of the ministry. And Brother Art is out there working with men and women out kind of out in the country, a little bit away from the town. And he brings them in there and uh, teaches them about the Lord and teaches them, uh, disciples them in Christ to help them to get off drugs and different things like that. And so we are momentarily going to have him on the screen. And uh, it's a blessing. There he is. Brother Art, how you doing, buddy? And we're doing terrific, doing terrific. And uh, we got you here in front of the church. You probably just see me, but there's a, a bunch of people in here and uh, and a lot of folks uh, tonight on Thursday. We'd like to pray with the missionary. Glad we could get you in and uh, talk to you. Brother Art, just go ahead and uh, tell us exactly what you guys do and, and everything, testimony, whatever you want to say, and uh, let us know how everything's going, if that's okay, brother. go through our, our HOPE curriculum, the HOPE program that, our, that my pastor wrote. And then at the same time, we'll do one-on-one -on -one counseling, biblical counseling with them as well to try to uh, get to the, the root issues of their problems as to why they do the things that they do. You know, you could have, um, you could have two heroin addicts come from the same neighborhood, same age. And a lot of people ask me, you know, how do I help? Uh, where do I start? How do I help this person? And the truth of the matter is, is I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know where to start unless I get, you know, uh, get with them and kind of 
uh, you know, get some details about their background. And, and that's kind of where the counseling process comes into the specific root issues that, that each individual deals with. Um, you know, people don't do heroin just because they do heroin. They do heroin because they're trying to escape something. And um, so um, that's kind of what we try to identify and help with. Of course, number one, first and foremost, that we deal with when they come here is, is um, you know, introduce them to Jesus Christ. And if they, they don't already have a relation, you know, a relationship with them, or if they don't already, not ever already been saved, uh, we introduce them and, you know, try to teach them how to have an intimate you know, personal relationship with him on a day-to-day -day basis, because ultimately it's God that's the counselor and it's going to, uh, where they're going to find the help that they need. And it's, it's a blessing to watch right now. We have eight men in our men's dorm and we have, uh, two ladies in our ladies dorm currently. And, um, it's just a blessing to watch, uh, the process that God puts them through and hear the testimonies that they give on how God speaks to them and, uh, just the other day, I had a, uh, one of our newer guys come in, struggles with anger really bad, and uh, just recently saved. He's from Kentucky, and uh, he um, uh, one of his root issues is is emotional pain, and just it causes him a great deal of anger and affects his life. And he was just telling me this uh, yesterday morning, I think it was, in counseling, how the Lord. It was like Jesus was speaking to him directly the other night in his bed as he was going to sleep and um, we're dealing with forgiveness and how, uh, you know, that's the answer for anger is to to learn how to forgive the people in your life that, uh, that have hurt you and, uh, you know, failed to meet your expectations. And he, he asked me directly, he said, what if I don't want to? And I said, um, well, you don't have to, um, but you know, it's your choice. But, and I began to kind of show him what's happening, what would happen if he didn't, um, God's not going to make you forgive people, but you're going to be tormented the rest of your life if you choose not to. And so he, he took that back to the, to the dorm, went through the work day. And, and that night he felt like the Lord just spoke to him about forgiveness and, and all that Christ have had forgiven him for. And, and what right did he have not to be at least willing to forgive the people in his life that's hurt him. So, and then this week I met with him and uh, just seemed like a completely different person. He's got some more peace on his face, you know, his countenance. And so it's, it's a blessing to see what the Lord does. I, so we have the, the ranch ministry here that we take folks in. Of course, we have our hope addictions program that meets Friday nights for our community. Uh, the ranch attends, but also the community is welcome to come to that as well. Um, and then I also travel all over the country, uh, trying to help and teach other churches how to do what we do uh, in our country. And so this last month was was pretty busy for my wife and I. We were in South Carolina. We did a addictions workshop at Trident Baptist Church, and that was more for uh, the affected of the addicted, the folks who are affected by whoever the addict might be in their life, whether it's mom, dad, brother, sister, and uh, just kind of some get, try to give them some help and hope from the Bible on how to deal with that. And we were in, and then we flew up to North Carolina. We did a regional hope conference up there, kind of a miniature uh, conference of the one that, that you attend uh, nationally there here in Oklahoma. And then uh, preached at uh, Chapel Street Baptist Church, presented our ministry there as well in North Carolina. Then we, then we flew over to Ohio and did another regional conference uh, for a few days. Uh, preached at a different church there, Pastor uh, Travis Burke's church. And then my wife and I drove from Cincinnati to um, Indiana, and we did what we call Hope Kickoff. This was a church that had been trained uh, in the Hope Ministry, and they had been uh, kind of, you know, doing in-house uh, for for a month or two, and then they were ready to kind of open up, have kind of a grand opening to the public. And so I was there for their, their Hope Kickoff and uh, outreach, and it was... Uh, it was certainly a blessing to to see how the Lord's using using their ministry there in in uh, Burn, Indiana. So that's that's kind of what I do, and then I come back and to the ranch, and uh, I've got a great assistant, brother Mike Farrell. He uh, he and his family are here. He assists me while I'm gone, he takes care of everything, and um, and so uh, uh, I come back and try to play catch up with the things that kind of got you know left behind when I was gone, and and uh, we just keep just keep on plugging along, brother, trying to help people. Amen, brother Art. You guys still blowing stuff up out there in the middle of the, the country? <laughs> yeah, we we uh, 
we try to be mindful of our neighbors. Uh, we, <laughs> we don't get, they're not too, uh, not too keen on, you know, anything over two or three pounds of tannerite. So they get this stuff called tannerite and you get it in this big old, like a container and then you shoot it and it yeah. will, it will blow up. And so they got real excited. What was how big, how much did y'all blow up that time? The city people were hearing it in the city and they're wondering what was going on. How how much did y'all blow up that time? Oh, uh, that was 16 pounds. Yeah. And, yeah. Pastor has limited me. That was a church function. Uh our people from our church came out fourth of July celebration. Church function. We, I yeah, love that. We blew, we blew up 16 yeah, pounds I, of ten right now. I love that. Pastor, Pastor has limited me to one pound for church functions from now on. Hey, so. man. No, I think it's great, man. I, we had a good time out there. Well, but Brother Art, we're excited to be get behind it. I try to talk to people just about every day. I try to talk to people when they're getting on a plane and getting on a bus. I tell them, man, we'll drive you in a van there. Uh, yes, and, and it's a lot of ladies. I try to get ladies. It's real hard to reach women uh, in this city. Uh, guys are a little bit easier. Uh, but I always try to get somebody down there and, uh, you know, we'll just continue to pray the Lord lets us do that one day because I love to. And we've been talking about it, praying about land outside the city to be able to start a ranch ever since I was there a year and a half ago, whatever it was. Uh, but, um, man, we sure appreciate you, Brother Art. Appreciate your family. Did one of your boys get married? Yes, sir. My oldest son, Timothy, got married in October of last year. and. Yeah. My wife and I are uh, going to be grandparents in August, so they're expecting their first child. You're right? an old man, brother. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm only kidding, brother Art. Well, listen, we want to pray. Do you have any needs, personal needs, or anything we can pray about and, uh, and different things like that? Anything we you, you give them to us, let us know what we can pray about, maybe be able to help you with. Sure, yeah. A uh, couple of things. Uh, I'm personally praying for... Uh, God to send us a fully supported family, a staff family that would be here to help. In addition to Brother Mike and his family, we just um, we need more help. It's a lot of work to to do what we do, um, you know, twenty four seven, and it puts a lot of stress on on the staff. So I'm praying the Lord was, would uh, provide that. It would also open up uh, uh, some other opportunities for us to grow and expand and do some more things on the ranch that we want to do. And uh, grow, you know, build buildings and stuff of that nature. And then as far as um, another thing I'm praying for is um, some resources to be able to take the vision that's in my head about the ranch and be able to make a video that, that will depict that image, you know, that, that vision for people to kind of just send it out to folks to, to try to get some more um, support and finances to build the things that we want to build on the ranch and expand and be able to help more people. So those are two big. So what do you need? Like a hypnotist to get what's inside (laughs) your head and get it out? (laughs) Well, no, I just need to learn how to communicate, I guess. Yeah, no, that's good. (laughs) Communicate and put it in a digital format where folks can maybe like watch a video and see what we're talking about. Yeah, well, praise the Lord. We, we, we'll pray about that, Brother Art, and uh, tell your wife we said hi, and and uh, yes, I'm very thankful for you guys down there. I've learned so much through the years coming down there, biblical counseling. Uh, Brother Art goes to Beth Haven Baptist Church, who has a, insta, uh, a seminary-type deal. Uh, uh, what, what are we calling it, a Bible college or— It's a Beth Haven Baptist Seminary. Yeah, Beth yes, Seminary, it's... and they do biblical counseling. And a lot of people are very weak. A lot of preachers, including myself at times, were very weak in counseling areas, very strong in other areas. And so they 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 actually teach folks how to counsel from the Bible because all the answers are in the Word of God. And so Brother Art has been there for several years. As a matter of fact, you came and visited when I was preaching about six years ago, right? We met there praying in the office with the preacher, and then you came back and moved there. Uh, and so yes, it's a blessing, brother. We'll pray. We're thankful to be able to be behind it with a little bit of money each month and to be able to, to, to keep on supporting it, Brother Art, and we're thankful that you could uh, come talk to us tonight, and, and it's a blessing. Uh, and so if you need anything, please let us know, and don't, don't ever uh, shy away from that. Uh, we're, we're thankful to be able to do anything we can when we can. And, and so we're going to pray here in just a second, Brother Art. We love you. We appreciate you coming on. And uh, uh, how's that young lady doing up in Boston that, that went back from, uh, from there? She's still plugging along well? No, no, sir. She had a kind of a setback uh, last I Yeah. Last I heard she, she's not doing well. So I haven't seen her on Facebook, but she was doing well for a long time. She was. Yeah. yeah. Her and her, 
husband would have some problems. And so just pray for her. That yeah, God no, would, uh, Rhonda, that's what her name yeah. was. Yeah. Yeah. We'll pray yes. for her, brother. Well, listen, Amen. Lord knows. And, uh, I'm thankful for what you guys do. Cause I see real changes in those folks. You're not just housing a bunch of drug addicts trying to get them to quit doing it. You're, you're teaching them what they need in the mind through the word of God. And I appreciate that. We love you, man. Uh, you love have you a good too, night. Man. Okay, brother. Art? Thank you. Sir. All right, God, God bless, bless. You. All right, let's pray for them at the Victory Ranch. Uh, it's an incredible place. They have lots of acreage out there. They they have those guys, you know, doing, uh, you know, crops and animals and different things to feed and, and keeping them busy, those ladies and those men. But then they, they work with the Word of God often throughout the day, and, and they really get the help they need. So I appreciate that. Let's pray. Father, we love you so much. Thank you, Lord, for allowing our church to have a ministry of missions that where we send uh, money every month to around 40 missionaries and to be able to help them to be able to, to make it on their perspective or their, their field, Lord, wherever they're at. And I'm thankful for the Victory Ranch tonight, Brother Art and his wife and the family there and the, the ones that are helping and Pastor uh, Carter and the others that are there. Lord, thank you for what you're doing there in Oklahoma. And I pray that you continue to bless, pray that you give them that family they need. Lord, if that would be your will, you'd send someone there that would be able to be supported and to be able to help out God to great need and then Lord I pray that you'd help him with the information that he has that he needs to get on paper and book form or in video form to convey the needs and the vision that he has for that place Lord please help him with that we love you tonight Lord and we sure need you in Jesus name we pray amen all right let's stand to our feet we'll go ahead and dismiss the little lights we'll sing a verse by the poem we'll shake hands Hymn number 529, Rescue the Perishing, 529, turn over there, that's what they're doing down there, that's what we need to be doing here, 529, I'm sorry, 539, Rescue the Perishing, sorry about that, 539, sing a verse, sing it out tonight, here we go, all together now, Rescue the perishing, care for the dying, snatch them in pity from sin and the grave. We pour the erring one, lift up the f tell them of Jesus the mighty to save. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying, Jesus is merciful, Jesus. Jesus will save. Turn around while she plays the verse. Shake a few hands.
right. All right. Let's make our way back if we can. Let's sing those last two verses. Ushers, get ready. 539. Here we go. Down in the human heart, crushed by the tempter. Feelings like bury the grace can restore. Touched by the loving heart, waken by kindness. Cords that are broken will vibrate once more. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying. Jesus is merciful. Jesus will save. Rescue the perishing, duty demands it. Strength for thy labor, the Lord will provide. Back to the narrow way, patiently win them. Tell the poor wanderer the Savior has died. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying. Jesus is merciful. Jesus will save. All right. Well, remain standing. Let's go ahead and pray for the offering tonight. Ask God to bless it. Be faithful to the Lord. Make sure you're faithful to your missions. I think our missions has been doing tremendous, and it's been doing that ever since we had our missions conference. Uh, praise the Lord. I was talking to Brother Weedo on the way down here. I preached his missions conference last year. And they committed 84,000, and he said that 112,000 came in, that they, they went above it, 40,000 or $30,000. And I thought, man, that's incredible. That little country church out there in the middle of nowhere, and God is getting it done, amen. And I praise the Lord for that. So it's just, just wanted to let you know. And uh, he said to tell you guys he loved you and is praying for the church. And so let's pray for the offering. Father, we love you so much. Thank you for your love for us. Thank you for a good night. Thank you for allowing us to assemble together to encourage one another and to hear the word of God preach, be able to give. Lord, bless the giving in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. Thank you for standing. do something real quick um i can't remember somebody's birthday's tomorrow I'm trying to figure that out in my mind uh brenda she just is reluctant look at her just making her come up here brenda come up we sing happy birthday to her and she will be well i'll tell but i'm very thankful for brenda because I almost lost her a couple years ago or a year ago uh it was really rough and I, when i seen her in the hospital i really didn't think she was gonna make it uh, and the Lord, Lord blessed it and took care of her and brought her back. Amen. And so her birthday is tomorrow. And so Brent, step on up to a little before everybody can see your smiling face. And let's sing happy birthday to Brent. Here we go. Happy birthday to you. Woo! Happy birthday to you. Woo! Happy birthday, dear Brenda. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Ready? I think we got, uh, no, we got nothing. We got no candy. Miss Kara is like wicked. I'm uh, sorry. Uh, I got some handy, some wipes. Got some wipes. I feel the things back here. All right, I want to do this. Our our uh, our uh, our volleyball team finished. Oh, what a blessing! You can go to the corner store and you can get some sour spray. That's what Amelia, that's that's what Amelia wants. She said, Daddy, I want to go sour. When we live right there, she's like, Can I go to the corn store and get some sour spray? I'm like, What? We go down there and they'd have a spray. You sprayed your mouth and it was sour. And I thought, Well, praise God. Uh, I want to do this. I'm proud of our girls. They played volleyball this year and they they fought it out through the you know last year and this year and stayed strong. And they've had a couple of tournaments recently. They had one just this past week during our revival during the day and they all got in late. And so, but they came in second place in the tournament. And so that was a blessing. So let me get these girls to come Madison, Brooklyn, Destiny, Josiah, Kaylin, and Amelia. 
Amelia. Yeah. Is Amelia is upstairs. Are, let me get these girls to come. Madison, Brooklyn, Destiny, Josiah. They're like, who's going to get up first? Uh, Brooklyn, Madison, you got up first. Madison was the most excited. No, you don't want to be the most excited, right? You're like, now nah, I'm going to get up second so nobody thinks. I'm, oh, look at Millie coming up in here. M Millie's the first fourth grader in the history of, of Liberty Baptist Church to play varsity volleyball. <laughs> Praise God. So the second place team, and they did well. Here, you have to put it in your neck. Um, everybody's got to wear them the rest of the service. And uh, no, no, I got to do this. No, I'm proud of them, man. Listen, they battled through, and they did really good at the faith tournament, and that was a blessing, and I just want to make sure that they know. Yeah, you got that? <laughs> All right, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to. I'm, I'm not going to. it over the Look thing. Oh, wait, you got. No, 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 no. What do you mean? Just hand it to me. Uh, I'm going to get over your, your Afro puff. Here we go. <laughs> and so, and your Afro puff. All right, let's take a picture with them. Somebody take a picture. You got the camera, Paul? Take a picture. You five sit up here. Miss Kara wants to make sure we get a picture. Uh, just kind of look towards Brother Paul, and then I'm going to get in it, too. And uh, And always remember when you look at that picture when you're old, you say, remember pastor says, smile, don't mess around, we're going to kill you. And that's a blessing. Amen. All right, let's take our Bibles tonight and let's turn to Luke chapter number 23. Luke chapter number 23 in the Word of God. If you need the Bible, we'll make sure we get one of those. We've got a bunch of gift Bibles coming. I think we still have Bibles. And a blessing over Bible Baptists is people have been asking, can I have a Bible? Can I have a Bible? And we ran out of them last night, the ones we had over there. And some young people were saying, can I have a Bible? And I was talking to David this morning uh, over there at Solid Rock. And he said, one of the kids saw my Bible. And he said, what, do you do? what is that? And he goes, it's my Bible. And uh, one of these little kids, and the kid said, well, where do you read it at? And David said, well, I opened it up, and I showed him where I was reading at. And he says, can I get one? And he came in, and we, we just gave the last one away. But we're going to get those over for those kids tomorrow, and uh, it's a blessing. Uh, you know, you get into the Word of God, it will change your life. Uh, you know, it's, it's funny, when, you're not, when you don't know the Lord, you'll think, man, it's the most boring book probably in the history of the world. And you maybe have never really read it. But when you start reading the Word of God, and, and listen to me, if I'm lying, you know, I, I wouldn't lie up here uh, for the best of my ability, uh, but, but, but I'm serious. When you start reading the Bible, it changes your life, and it's incredible because it's supernatural. And so we're going to begin reading in verse number 26, and we're going to read down a, a, a several verses, so just stay with me, and then we'll uh, pray, and we'll get right into the message right after. Who's singing, Brother Paul? Okay, we'll get right into we'll, we'll have that song and then we'll we'll get into the message. Verse number 26 of Luke chapter number 23, it says, And as they led him away, talking about Jesus, they laid hold upon one Simon, a Cyrenian, coming out of the country, and on him they laid the cross that he might bear it after Jesus. We know Simon of Cyrene, he's carrying that cross because Jesus has already been beaten and what are you doing? Uh, read the Bible, stop hugging. Uh, I'm sorry, I said that out loud. All right, both Paul, help me to not do these kind of things in my mind, but yeah, I, I'm looking at KK walking over and hugging her. We don't read the Bible, woman. All right, here we go. Verse number, all right, what was I doing? Where was I at? Verse 26, Simon of Cyrene has, is helping Jesus carry that cross because he's been beaten and battered and they think he's not going to make it. Verse 27, and there followed him a great company of people and of women which also bewailed and lamented him. But Jesus turning on them said, daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming in which they shall say, blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bear and the paps which never gave suck. They shall... The, uh, then shall they begin to say to the mountains, fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do these things in a green tree, what shall be done in a dry tree? Jesus is prophesying to them as he's carrying this cross, letting them know that the end is going to come soon. And they were 
also two other malefactors led with him to be put to death. And when they were come to the place, which is called Calvary, they crucified him. And the malefactors, one on the right hand and the other on the left, then said, Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. And the people stood beholding, and the rulers also with them derided him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he be the Christ, the chosen of God. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him, and offering him vinegar, and saying, If thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. And the superstition also was written over him in letters of Greek, and Latin, and Hebrew, This is the king of the Jews. And one of the malefactors which were hanged railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God, seeing that thou art the same in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive due reward of our deeds, but this man hath done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And the king and Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. And there was a darkness over all the earth unto the ninth hour. And the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was rent in the midst. And when they had and when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said th- thus, he gave up the ghost. Now when the centurion saw what was done, he glorified God, saying, Certainly this was a righteous man. And all the people that came together to that site, behold, I'm sorry, and all the people that came together to that site, beholding the things which were done, smote their breasts and returned. And all his acquaintances and the women that followed him in the Galilee stood afar off, beholding these things. Let's pray. Father, we love you so much. Thank you for the word of God. Thank you for meeting with us like you already have. I pray that you bless the preaching and teaching your word tonight. Help us, Lord, to see it like you see it, like you've you've wanted us to see it and understand it like you want us to understand it tonight. May we leave here different. I pray, Lord, that you put your hand upon us and guide us and lead us. And may lives be changed eternally as well as uh, tonight and upon this earth, Lord. Help us now in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. Thank you for standing. To feed a lot of strangers He borrowed a colt To ride into town on He borrowed a tomb But he wouldn't need it long And the only thing he bought Was me When he shed Satan had told me you're nothing but hell bound. You're never gonna win. Your soul's forever lost. But then I heard how Jesus paid it all on the rugged cross. the one who owns it all 
And the only thing he bought was me. When he shed his blood on Calvary, now redeemed by his blood for eternity. Oh, the only thing he bought was me. Lord, but we'd always said this, and I, and I believe this, and I'll say this tonight, that um, if I was the only person that lived upon this earth and needed to be saved, Jesus would have came and died for me, uh, and, and and he did, uh, and, and, and I, you know, over Bible Baptist, we have a whole different, uh, you know, about everybody that's coming there that's visiting are new, new Christians. Um, really not grounded in the Word of God and don't know a lot, and so it's very it's awesome time to be able to teach that and, and to be able to tell them the stories of of what we are really about, not about religion. There's a lot of rel Philadelphia. When I was coming to Philadelphia 13 years ago, I studied it out, and it's a very religious city. Uh, I think Philadelphia was 35 percent Catholic at that time. There's lots of other uh, denominational. Uh, churches and uh, or so-called churches and a lot of religion even in our neighborhood here in a a uh, what many people would call a a sin cursed neighborhood on the outside sin is no different here than it is anywhere else it's just here it's on the outside of the buildings uh, everywhere else it's just on the inside being hidden somewhat and and it, it is a it is a there are lots of churches in these neighborhoods uh, but not a lot of gospel preaching churches. And church, what I mean by gospel preaching is, is telling about the good news of Jesus Christ, what he did. And, and, that, and that's the only thing that rescues anybody. That's the only thing that will bring peace. I told him last night, uh, God says in first, or Second Peter chapter number th uh, one, it said that grace and peace be multiplied unto you uh, through the knowledge of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. You want grace and you want peace. It gets multiplied, but it only gets multiplied multiplied through the knowledge of Him, through through gaining that relationship with the Lord. It doesn't get multiplied by buying stuff and saying prayers and then and then and, and walking around things and doing things and talking to people and different men and booths and different things like that. That's a religious type of deal. And, and that's man built upon man. But what really happens with God is it God does something supernatural with the relationship. Now, we don't believe in spooky you know, things happening. And when I say supernatural, I mean, it's just something that's incredible that God can minister to Brother Jason driving down the road, wondering about some things or something happening. And God just say, Jason, it's going to be OK, not with a voice. I'm not hearing voices, and neither are most of the people in this room, I think. But if you're hearing voices, you, you need help psychologically. But God doesn't speak in a voice. God speaks in, in our hearts, and he, he helps us and gives us that relationship that is so important. And so tonight I want to talk to you about it and give you some things. And, uh, and, and we have the, the passage of Scripture in Luke where, the the, where Jesus is being led to, to be He's been he's been beaten already. He's already had the cat of nine tails and has has been whooped pretty good. And he's not doing well physically speaking. But God, Jesus was all man, but he was all God. And he he came was born to die. The Bible says that before the foundation of the world was made, the Lamb of God was slain. Which means he was already, it wasn't a it was an afterthought already. God was going to send his son to deliver mankind from their sin. And he did that. And so Jesus is, is walking and, and they've got two thieves with him that are going to be crucified. It was nothing for Roman, the Roman government to crucify people in these times. Matter of fact, there were great piles of dead bodies, they say, at these times outside of Rome where people who had been put on a cross and, and crucified and nails here, nails here, nails to their feet, and they would die of suffocation because they couldn't hold themselves up anymore. They would just take those bodies and throw them to big piles. 
And so it was nothing for people to be crucified. And so they brought, put Jesus in the middle of it. But Jesus had already been, uh, it already been prophesied uh, 700 years before that in the book of Isaiah, how Jesus would die. Isaiah 53 would talk about the crucifixion of Jesus. You ought to read it sometime. And you'll see Jesus right there on the cross. And so he's going out, but he's got these two men that are with him. And they are thieves. And they did something wrong. And, and now they're going to be punished by death. And, and I don't know if they, what they did deserved death, but that's what they were going to get. And, and as they're walking by, people are railing on them. Some of the chief uh, priests in the religious crowd it talked about there, and then other people in the cities, and they're saying stuff, look, if you're a king, save yourself. If you're the king of the Jews, do something. And, and they have superscriptions written up, the king of the Jews in different languages. And Jesus is walking out and he's got, he's with these two malefactors, malefactors, these two men, and they put them on the cross, one on one side of Jesus, one on the other side of Jesus. And they, the one starts to rail on Jesus and, and talk bad to him and, and, and kind of mock him and say, why don't you save us and save yourself and da da da. And the other one says, hey, listen, you know, you, what are you doing? We deserve what we're getting. But he never did anything. And that's a very interesting statement by this man to say that Jesus hadn't done anything. I wonder how he knew Jesus had not done anything. Maybe he had heard about him and understood. And, and that really is a great picture of him trusting in a sinless Savior at that point. He never did anything. And, and, then, and, and then he says, Lord, uh, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus looks at him and says, uh, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. You're, you're going to be with me. And, and we know the rest of the story. They come and they, 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 they it's getting dark and, and things are happening and, 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 and earthquakes and, and different things are happening and they, they break both of their legs so that they die. And then when they come to Jesus, it's right about this time, Jesus had already said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Listen, that's a wonderful thing, Brother Mikey. God said, forgive them. He wasn't just talking about all these people. He's talking about the people for the rest of time. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And you know, I can sit here and, and tell you to this tonight that before I gave my life to the Lord, I made a lot of stupid decisions, and I make a lot of stupid decisions today. But God forgave me of those decisions. Because before I met Christ, I really did not know what I was doing to Christ. I knew that I was making choices that were bad. I mean, sin is sin, and we know that. I knew what I was doing was wrong, but I really didn't care at that point. He says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And then the Bible says that Jesus commends his spirit into the Father's hands, and he gives up the ghost. And, and, and he, 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 it's now finished. He, he's now done what he was supposed to do, and he's, he's laid down his life. Nobody took his life. Sometimes in the book of Luke, he cared about one person. In the book of Luke, I believe it is, where he talks about if one sheep go astray and the other 99 don't, well, I'm going to go look for the one sheep. God cares about individuals. And, and, and on the cross, he cared about that man, that thief. His heart went out to him. Did Jesus know that he, what he had done? Sure he did. Whatever he did, Jesus knew about it. In Matthew chapter number 27, where right before Jesus gets crucified, the Bible says that they let go Barabbas and kept the Son of Man. It was a time where they would let go one person out of prison at that point in time. Every, every year or something like that. And, and, and Barabbas went free, and he was a murderer. And he was an insurrectionist. He was causing, causing problems with the government. And he let him go and they crucified Jesus. That's a great picture of what God did for you and me. Because he cared for us. He cared for Barabbas. And, and he let him go. And, and so we see here Jesus is, is mocked by various groups. Uh, one of those groups were the people passing by. And they, they looked at him, and, and, and boy, this was something that was common in those days. You know, me and you, would I wouldn't want to go see somebody get crucified. I mean, that would be, that, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't bear to see something like that, but that, this was well known back in these days. And they're looking by and they're wagging their heads. Oh, man, they deserve that. These guys are messed up. It was the form, everybody had bought into that kind of thing. 
the passerbyers. And then there were the Jewish rulers in verses, verse 25. And the people stood beholding him, and the rulers also with them derided him, saying, he saved others. Let him save himself if he be Christ, the chosen of God. Hey, Jesus was prophesied early in the Old Testament that the Messiah was coming and, and, and that the Savior of the world would come. Jesus would be it. And the Jewish people, they didn't believe it was him. Although everything added up to being him, but the Bible says that the, the minds of them were blinded. They would not be able to see it. Uh, they wouldn't be able to understand it. So those Jewish rulers were people passing by. The soldiers, verse 36 and 37, and the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar. He's thirsty, and they're going to give him some vinegar. What a smack in the face. And, and saying, if thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. Then you got the two thieves. One of them is mocking God and the other one isn't. And in verses 40 to 43, we see that one of the thieves believed on the Lord. This is a, this is a great thing to understand that, that he repented over his, you know, Lord, remember me when thou comest into the kingdom. I, I don't deserve to get there. He's already admitted that he doesn't deserve it. He realizes, and hey, there's a lot of folks that think they deserve God and think that they're God's gift. And none of us are, and I don't believe we have anybody in this room that believes that, and I thank God for that. He rebuked the other thief. He remembered him. Jesus said, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. In verse 34, we see Jesus praying for his enemies. Verse 43, we see uh, his prayer for the repentant thief. Tonight I want to give you four things just, just so we understand Exactly what happens, what exactly went down. Four facts about salvation. Well, Bert, what is salvation? Salvation is being delivered from the penalty of your sin. You no longer have to pay for your sin. But Jesus paid for it. And, and listen, it's a well-known fact that Jesus died on the cross through history books across time, not just the Bible. Many people wrote about it. When I was so hard-headed, when I first started going to church, I'm like, I wonder if that's even true. But I could never find fault in anything that was preached out of this Bible. And so uh, there's some facts here that in this story that I want to give you tonight through the Word of God. I want you to see it and understand it. Number one, but you understand this, is sometimes we, we don't think like this. But salvation is offered to everybody and anybody. Right. It could happen. Did them boys go upstairs? You see, that's a blessing that them little boys are upstairs. Because you know what? They're young. One of them's nine and one of them's 12. And, and boy, when they came in, I thought, well, you know, I don't know if their parents know where they're at. But then I thought, well, we've got cameras in every room. And so them boys are well protected here. And, and boy, well, you know, I, 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 if, if they're going to be out in that park, I'd rather them be inside here. Uh, at night and all that stuff. And, 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 and that little boy, Mikey, he said, uh, he just came out of nowhere. He, or, I don't know what his name was. What's that little boy? What is it? James. Huh? What is it? James. Uh, the, the, he, he, somebody asked him, was he Puerto Rican? He goes, no. And then, and then Sincere's like, well, you know they got white Puerto Ricans like that. And I said, yeah, you're, you got relatives like that. Lisa's brothers. And, and, and uh, so he goes, you guys know my dad? And I just thought, well, let me think of the, the, the most, most well-known name of any white person. I said, Mike? He goes, how did you know? And I'm like, <laughs> just a good guest. <laughs> uh, and then I, I said, listen, can you stay here till 830? He goes, yeah, I have to leave at 7. And I said, well, we're gonna, seven's four minutes. And he goes, no, no, well, I think I'm okay. And I said, well, it'd be good because you know what he's going to hear up there? He's going to hear about Jesus. And at 12 and 9, yeah, they ain't like us. You know, we get, we get corrupted by this world. It's hard for, harder for an older person to get saved. But salvation's offered to anyone. And at this time when this guy's on the cross, he, he's about to die. And he truly turns to the Lord. Lord, remember me when thou comest in thy kingdom. Uh, Romans 10, 13, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, it's saved from what? The penalty of our sins. That's what the context of the Bible is. Who's, I'm glad we have a whosoever God. Amen. And that's who he is. Amen. And it's the, this is the only one I recorded, I believe, was a deathbed conversion where he's about to die and he gets saved. And, and God cares about dying men. 
God cares about people and, and others and wants them to know the Lord and wants them to understand. And, and he wants to save them because he sent his only son to die for them. And so it's a great story. It, it's not a fairy tale. People want to make it out to be a fairy tale, but it's the only message that has shook the world like it has the last 2,000 years. I mean, that's a message that shook everything, changed everything, still changing things today. I want you to think about this, the contrast here. In the morning, the thief was nailed to a cross. In the evening, he was wearing a crown with Jesus. In the morning, he was the enemy of Caesar. In the evening, he was joint heirs with Jesus Christ. In the morning, he was rejected by men. In the evening, he was rejoicing with the angels. In the morning, he died a criminal on earth. In the evening, he was a citizen of heaven. And that's a blessing. Luke emphasizes one man and one man alone in this story. And Jesus would have died for anybody, one person. He, it's open to anybody that trusts in him. It's a childlike faith. The Bible says you must have a childlike faith. That is not a, uh, uh, let me examine every inch of this, and, and, and boy, I don't know. And, and I, I'm just telling you, I've been thinking a lot about what I've said here recently. There are so many miracles going around us right now, in just in this world alone, that are unbelievable. Just the fact that we all breathe air inside of an atmosphere that is that is not that we're on a world that's spinning around so fast, and and the sun's so close that we don't burn up, and we're so uh, and we're or, and, and we don't uh, freeze to death. You say, well, that's just amazing that that no, that's God. Uh, the, the fact that trees grow out of the ground from a little bitty uh, pebble. Uh, the fact that the babies start off about this big. And, 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 and when they're born, they're this big. And then, and then 15 years later, they're this big. I mean, that's incredible that every part of the body works together and does stuff. When you get a, when you get a cut, it's almost like we're superheroes. We just, don't, we just don't heal as fast as a superhero does. You know, with those, those guys with the superpowers on TV where they get cut and it just heals up. But you know, through time, Mars does the exact same thing. That's a miracle. We don't have to go to the doctor. They, they just heals up. There's so many miracles. And Jesus Christ is a miracle worker. And he, he, he he's offered salvation to anybody and everybody. Number one, salvation is offered to anyone, anywhere. Number two, salvation is through grace, is by grace through faith. We talked about that last night at the Bible study. For by grace are you saved through faith. Grace is not getting, or is getting what you don't deserve. None of us deserve God. He said, well, I'm not as bad as you were, Brother Burton. Probably not. But you know what? The, the, the person I worry about the most is the person that has never done anything really too wild. They've, they've always kind of followed the, the laws and, 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 want, and a pretty good person has a pretty good upbringing and, and had pretty, pretty good morals. And there are some of those folks still there. And, 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 but, and then they think, I don't have a need for a savior. Sure you do. You're still a sinner. You've committed at least one sin. We have to have God. And, and God loves us. And salvation is by grace through faith. We believe that, that God is God, that he died, he buried, he rose again on the third day. We believe that by faith, and we believe it through the history books. Uh, uh, many, most religions believed he was on that cross. Most religions just don't give him the benefit of being God on that cross. The Muslims believe he was on the cross. Did you know that? They think before he died, he, he, before he died, they switched somebody else in there and, and, and took him out, took God off, Jesus the prophet. Jesus the prophet never really died. They switched him. And that, that's exactly the, the truth of the matter. And, and so God has been God for eternity, and he's always offered it by grace. And that's why we have to be careful when we're talking to people and say, you know, you need to quit this and quit that. No, no, he's giving it to them when they don't deserve it. But they have to have faith. They have to say, you know, Lord, I want you to come to my heart and save me. Now, I believe it by faith. You understand, I never knew that what was going to happen when I got saved, that I'd be serving the Lord the rest of my life. I'm glad I am serving the Lord the rest of my life. I have a lot of peace for that. But I just thought, you know, I want to turn to him. I'm tired of living life without him. I know something's missing in my life. Every person on the face of the earth realizes something's missing in their life. Every single person you know on the face of the earth is searching for something every single day. 
and they'll never get contentment but by anything except the Lord. And the relationship, not going to church, not giving, not doing that, but a relationship. It's through faith. And so we believe in it. The Bible says, for by grace are you saved, by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. I mean, it's the gift of God. It's not of works. That, that dispels many religions. The gift means he's going to give it to you, and you don't have to give it back. Brother Paul, if I gave you this and took it back, is it a gift? No. If I, Brother Paul, I'm going to give you this iPad, but it's $500. It's a gift. Well, it's not a gift. You don't pay for gifts. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the Bible says. His salvation is by grace through faith alone. And, and it challenges sacramentalism. Uh, the, the sacraments, uh, the belief that specific objects are essential and concerning the grace upon a believer in order to be made right with God. You go in there, you put that wafer in your mouth, drink that, that juice or that wine, and boy, you're just fine. Well, listen, if sacraments got us to heaven, Jesus didn't have to die. It's not sacraments that's going to save us. Uh, you see, you're not saved apart from your confirmation. You're not saved apart from being sprinkled with water. You're not saved by Holy Communion. You're not saved by church membership. Salvation is by grace alone, through faith. Baptism, I have a baptismal right here. I could fill it up in 45 minutes and we could run people. I'm ordained. I've had people lay hands on me in churches. I have certificates and they're filed in the courts and I could just start baptizing everybody, but that wouldn't do nothing. That'd just get them wet. Salvation is by faith. It's grace through faith alone. And, and so that's what the repentant thief was. Lord, I, uh, when y'all come to thy kingdom, remember me. Hey, today you're going to be with me in paradise. God knew exactly what was going on with him. Uh, baptismal regeneration. People say, well, if you get baptized, you'll have it. Purgatory. The belief that there's an intermediate place in the afterlife to which all people go before the eternal destiny in heaven or hell is determined. And the way to get out of purgatory, Brother Paul, is you to take your money and buy a bunch of candles and light them and then pray for me. What in the world? It's not according to this Bible. You can't get there. And this is the best-selling book in the history of the world. You got other religions making them up. The Jehovah's Witness have the New World Translation made by man. Uh, there's different books, and, 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 and there's, there's some of the, the other Bibles from religions, they'll put extra books in there to help agree with what they believe. There are some religions where the head, the Pope, can write Scripture. The Bible says if you add to this or any man take away from it, your name will be taken out of the book of life. You can't. It's through grace. It's through faith. It's an easy deal. The Bible says you trade lives with me and I'll give you my life. It's not, it's not works. It's not sitting here. It's not dressing up. It's none of that. He said, well, then why are we all here? Well, we all know why we're all here because God changed our life and we like being here. It helps us universalism the belief that all people will be made right with God eventually and, and, and live forever with God in heaven not true not true uh, uh, God took the one thief not the other it didn't happen uh, salvation is offered to anyone number one and anywhere salvation is by grace through faith alone that thief had it number three salvation is rejected by some in spite of everything God wants to do. You know, Brother Jeremiah, I look back on my life, and before I ever gave my life to the Lord, I could see God's handprints on my life. He did not like what I was doing, but I can see where he protected me. And, 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 and because God knew one day, how, how does God know? Well, God knows everything. It's something you'll never be able to explain or really understand. He knows tomorrow like it was yesterday. Time is nothing to God. And, and, and God knew that one day I would trust the Lord. Now, I had to make that choice myself, but I look back and see how God kept me safe for certain things and took care of me. But my salvation didn't come because I was in a car wreck and I lived. I meet a lot of people like that. I'll say, so how do you know for sure Jesus is your Savior? Well, I was in an accident. And I said, okay, so what happened? Well, I lived. So God's my Savior. 
Well, no, no, sir. I mean, I, I, I think that's great. And God lived. He's got a great plan for you. I don't want to bust him up too bad, but I'm just, listen, no, but have you ever, that guy, Rudy, that I was telling you about, I sat on Rudy's porch for an hour and a half the other day. And, and I said, Rudy, you know, do you know the Lord? He goes, man, I pray to God every single day to give me places safely to, to get me home safe and to not let nothing happen to me. And man, he does it all the time, Burton. And I said, man, that's great, Rudy. He loves you. He's got a big plan for you. Rudy, let me ask you this. Have you ever called upon him to be your savior? Rudy, let me show you some scripture. The Bible says, Rudy, with, with, but with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, but with the mouth confession is made unto salvation, Rudy. He says we, we have to call by our mouth to ask God to save us, but we have to believe it in our heart. Rudy, God says whosoever. Rudy, God says he showed us his love. He commendeth his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He loves us, Rudy, and he wants you to call out on him. Have you ever done that, Rudy? He goes, well, Burton, never have. And, and he says, now, I want to do that. And so I, he did that, 56 years old, unfortunately. I didn't force him. Now, and, I, and listen, listen, what is my, what is my uh, great come up by convincing a man to pray a prayer? Like, like some people think that we've got these ulterior motives. Now, I mean, what's that really going to do for me? Well, truthfully, what it does for me, it gets me excited because I got to do something for somebody and show them who the Lord is. It's not, it's not beneficial. He doesn't have any money. Hey, hey, I don't know. I think he's, 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 he's got some problems, disability and different things. I think he's really sick. And, and, and so he trusted in the Lord. And so I called him the next day. I said, Rudy, how you doing? Man, I am doing much better now, Burton. I was like, that's awesome, Rudy. Wait till you see me at church, Pastor. Or Burton. He keeps calling me Burton. And I, I love it. I think it's wonderful. See, some people are going to get it, but some people are going to reject it. The thief on the, on the cross, the other thief, he, he lost out. He didn't come to God. He could have. He could have said, you know, you're right. God, please help us. But he didn't. The, the chief priests walking by, they, did, they didn't turn to him. One was dying for sin. That was our Savior. One of the thieves was uh, dying away from it and, 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 and turned to the Lord. And then one of them was dying in it. And finally, I want you to see the classes of humanity that are here at that point in time. And in just a couple of minutes, we're done. Number one, they were the indifferent. Verse 35, those were the ones that stood around beholding him. They just, they just looked. They didn't care. Folks, there, there are a lot of indifferent people. Now, I do understand this. In the day we live in, many people come into contact with religious people. Some of them are very religious and devout in what they believe, and, and, and they're, they're being fooled by man. Some of them are really just whack jobs and believe something totally crazy and just, just, just it scares people. So then once I say something like, hey, listen, we'd love for you to come to Liberty Baptist Church, they already have a preconceived notion of what church really is because they've heard about it from their friends and they don't really know. And so that hurts us. That's where we pray and we say, no, no, listen, this isn't a religious organization. I, I, I don't run around making people do anything. I encourage you to. And, and as a pastor, when you're getting ready to go off a, a ditch into a, or a cliff or something, I'll say, hey, listen, you're, you're messing up. Let God help you now. Stop. Just turn to the Bible. That's what a good pastor would do. And, and, and so, but, but a lot of people are, they're indifferent. They don't care. They were the indifferent. They were the religious, the rulers that derided him. There's a lot of religious people out there, and I'm not saying they're wrong, but I do believe the religious people on the top of the whole chain I do believe they are liars. And one of the greatest businesses in the world is religion. One of the greatest money makers in the world is religion. And those the religious there, they didn't like Jesus because people were getting set free by grace. They said, well, it can't be that easy. They've got to do this. They've got to do that. They've got to do this, this, and that. No, no, God just sets us free when we turn to him. There were the materialistic, verse 34 says, those soldiers took his garments, they parted them, they tore them half, and they gambled for them with lots. I want a shirt. I want this. I want that. Uh, uh, they didn't tear them. They just parted them with each other. I want this. And they were the materialistic. A lot of people in this world today, they're just looking for stuff. 
I like stuff too. Don't get me wrong. I, I you know, I've, I've got a problem with that too. But I try to keep it under under grip. Uh, you know, uh, Dale in here right now. His birthday is Monday, and I'm gonna go get him a, a pair of shoes, which he doesn't need, but he likes them. And I'm thinking, man, I probably need a pair too. <laughs> but I don't. So I won't. But you know what? God gives me everything I need and the world's searching for everything they want and need and God has it all for them. The materialistic, and there were the earnest, there was the earnest seeker. The one who said, remember me. Remember me when thou comest into thy, the, the kingdom. And so number four, and we're done. Look at it with me real quick. Verse 50. And behold, there was a man named Joseph, a counselor, who was a good man and a just. The same had not consented to the counsel of the deed of them. This was Joseph of Arimathea. He, he didn't consent to what all the rulers were doing. He said, no, no, I, I, I believe he's God. And then he was of Arimathea, the city of the Jews, who also himself waited for the kingdom of God. This man went unto Pilate and begged for the body of Jesus. After they crucified him, he went to Pilate and says, please give me his body. He knew that they were about to take his body and throw him into a pile of bodies. But he believed he was God and, and he knew the prophecy a little bit. And, and, and Joseph had a tomb of his own that was there that he was going to use. And he, he took the body of Jesus. They wrapped him. They, 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 they did the, 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 the things that they would do with the scented oils and different things on the body. And they put him in a borrowed tomb. You see, number four, salvation Get some people fired up to serve them. I mean, it's just what it does. It, 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 is, it is a wonderful, wonderful thing. I, that, that ain't the point. The point is salvation will change lives. Joseph, he went and he begged for that body. And I preached a message years ago, don't leave Jesus hanging. He didn't need to be on that cross. Joseph said, no, give him to me. See, Jesus ain't on the cross. Uh, some religions have him still on that cross. Jesus ain't been on the cross. He came down off the cross. You won't find a cross, Jesus on this cross. And I'm not against any necklaces and different things that people wear, that women wear, uh, that have Jesus on the cross. I'm not against that. But I'm telling you, he's not on that cross. Because Joseph went to him. Hey, salvation changes somebody's lives. Where they go to the, Pilate was the ruler. And he said, Pilate, you've got to give him to us, please. And, and people were all against him. But listen, Pilate said, no, give him to us, him and Nicodemus. Let's take him and let's, let's get him a proper burial. And then three days later, he came up out of that grave. Hey, salvation is something that's incredible. It's offered to anyone, anywhere. I mean, he, anybody can have it. And he said, well, it can't be that easy. Why would you think it has to be hard? I've read the whole book. Can't find anywhere in there where it says it's hard. I gave my life to the Lord, and now he takes good care of me. Salvation is by grace through faith alone. Salvation will be rejected by some in spite of everything God wants to do. He loves you, gave his life for you. The world waits for what we have. If you're in here tonight, listen, salvation doesn't come from church membership. Salvation doesn't come because your mom and dad brought you to church. Salvation doesn't come because you sit in a church house and have a very good outlook on life. Salvation only comes one way. Lord, remember me. Remember when thou comest in thy kingdom. By the mouth confession is made unto salvation. We have to turn to him. We have to humble ourselves. How, what do you mean humble yourself? Realize that you need him. And he's the only way. By faith, trusting in him. And if you'll do that tonight, God will save your soul. He, he will come in and take abode. The Bible says he abodes within us. Holy Spirit is not a spirit that makes people talk in funny languages and flop around on the ground and gets people out of wheelchairs. It's not in here. The Holy Spirit is something that lives inside of us and guides us into all truth and points us to Jesus and allows us to be able to hear the voice of God in our hearts. And that is offered to anybody and everybody. And so, Miss Candy, if you'll come to the piano, I, I want to tell you tonight that he loves you, gave his life for you. Young people, Everybody listen to me very carefully. And, and even you adults, please don't go to hell because you're afraid to accept the Lord in front of somebody. 
I was 31 years old. And, and I just said, you know, I, I'm not going to let that. I want, I want the Lord. I want him to come into my heart and to save me. That lady, Charlene, I, I would imagine Charlene's probably 60 years old. I, she looks very young. I said, Miss Charlene, you look really too young to have all these grandchildren. And she has great-grandchildren. And she said, she felt she was almost ashamed. She said, Pastor, I had them real young. I, I didn't know. I didn't have nobody helping me. And I said, well, that's all right. You look good, sister. I mean, and, and she, she came with tears and said, I want to get saved. I, I want the Lord. Hey, it's, 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 it's something that happens. It's, it, and look, you know, she shows up on Wednesday with a big old smile. And, and she has a nice home. She has all the things she needs. She's not destitute. She's not starving or any side angles trying to get anything from the church. She just was lonely without Christ. And, and, and that's what it is. And so tonight, if you're like that, please let God speak to your heart. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes for just a moment. Everybody just be seated for just a second. With heads bowed and eyes closed, if you're in here tonight and God spoke to you, and maybe you've, maybe you've, maybe you've accepted the Lord as your Savior. I believe we've got many like that. And, and you've accepted God as your Savior, and there was a time in your life when you turned to Him, and you remember it. You don't have to remember the exact day. You don't have to remember the exact hour, but there was a time when you remember, I turned to the Lord that day, and I asked Him to save me. Can I pray for you? Would you lift your hand up just as a testimony unto God? I prayed and asked God to save me. I remember the day God saved me. Here's my hand, Pastor. Good. Hands all over the building. Good. Good. And there was, there was some that weren't able to raise your hand. Maybe you just didn't raise them, and that'd be okay, too. And, or maybe you just you couldn't raise them. Hey, can I tell you tonight that the Lord loves you, gave you, a, 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 tonight brought you to church, and, and had your preacher preach on a message that, that just kind of put the simple facts out there. He died for you. If you're in here tonight and you don't know for sure, and you've never trusted the Lord, and you're not sure that you trust Him, can I tell you, you're in a good place with some folks that can take this Bible and really show you and help you so that you can make a decision to trust the Lord. The Bible says, call unto me and I will answer thee. He says, cast all your care upon me. He wants us to talk to him and to be saved the only way we can and through Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If you're here tonight and you don't know for sure Jesus is your Savior, can I please pray for you? Would you slip your hand up? Say, preacher, pray for me. Here's my hand. Anybody like that? God bless you. I see that hand. Anybody else? Just slip it up right now. Say, preacher, pray for me. I'm not sure that Jesus is my Savior. Anybody like that at all? Okay. Well, with heads bowed and eyes closed, if you were supposed to raise your hand, I want you to know tonight God loves you gave his life for you. And we're not here to preach religion ever. This is far from a religious establishment and religion is shunned in the Bible and Jesus came to put an end to religion. We talk about a relationship with the Lord here. We don't sell anybody any goods and it doesn't cost anything to be here. We just want you to know that God loves you and he gave his life for you. And if you'll call out to him, whosoever shall call upon them Lord shall be saved. It's not something that if you, if you don't want to do it in front of anybody, that's fine. Maybe we can talk after the service. Maybe back come to your house. Maybe you're in a Christian school. Maybe you just need to get it settled. Maybe you've been in this church for years. I mean, I, I was in a church, sir. My mom and dad's old church in Arkansas. This lady had been there 25 years. And a man named Freddie Reed preached. And that lady walked down in the middle of the service and got saved after being in that church 25 years. Father, we love you so much. Thank you for your love for us. Bless the invitation now and help us to pray and talk to you. And thank you for a good service. May you have your will and way with us, Lord. And I pray for the one who raised their hand. They come forward right now. Let us take a Bible and show them how they can know for sure. Pray for those that maybe didn't have the courage to. Thank you for all that are saved. Thank you for paying that great price on the cross, Lord. And the reason I got saved, God, is because I didn't want you to die for nothing. You paid for me and you deserve to get what you bought. So I gave you my life and I still want to give it to you tonight again. Help us now tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's all stand our feet. If God spoke to you, come to this altar. Take time to talk to the Lord tonight. If you need to pray with somebody, if you'd like to pray with somebody, I'd love to pray with anybody. I feel like I can get a hold of God tonight and talk to him. Right now, and 
asking the Lord to work. What a God we serve. Glad November 17, 2002, the Lord came by and, and, and put his hand upon me and helped me to realize that I was lost. And he preached out of Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I realized I didn't have a shepherd. The world wants us to want you to believe that what you have is, is simpleness and all that. Yeah, it's very simple. Salvation is not hard. If I tell you the happiest people on the face of the earth are, are blood bought Christians. Now, everybody that says they're a Christian is not a Christian. Everybody that says they're saved or they're not saved. There's a lot of different things going around that tell you the different ways of getting it. But this King James Bible is 400 years old in the English language and is the Word of God. When they were making this Bible, the Catholic Church was going crazy in history. Look up history. They didn't want this book to come out because it was setting people free. And they were, they were, there was a lot going on. Biggest bloodbath in the history of the world was over the Word of God. Why? Because it sets people free and still does. Nothing like it. Are you mad at the Catholics? No, no. I want to see them all get saved and turn their life to the Lord and not to a man and not to religion. This is just this is the truth of the matter. I want to help them. Most of the ones I talk to at doorsteps really don't believe it anyway. They've just been doing it their whole life and they don't know any other way. That's what they'll say. I know they're just after my money. You guys remember Brother Mike uh, years ago, his grandmother, Miss, uh, Miss, uh, what was her name? Lolio. Miss Lolio, 82 years old. She came to an Easter service and got saved and she told the Catholic priest and they put her out of the church. And he would, the only reason he came to the house is to get her money. She goes, he comes by, she's South Philly Italian. She's like, they just come by my house to get my money, Pastor. And then she goes, I just give it to him. And when she told him she got saved, they said, you can't come back to the church. She says, I'm going to Easter service. She goes, if you go, you're done. It's low, Leo. Now, I don't know if she's still alive, but she was a blessing. And gave her life to the Lord, never too late. Came out of religion into a relationship. What a blessing. Father, we love you. Thank you for your love for us. Thank you for a good night in your house. Thank you for blessing us with the word of God. Thank you for helping us to understand what we got, what people need. Help us to be lighthouses this week. Help somebody to lead somebody to Christ. May we, may we be able to tell somebody the good news and let them get saved. I pray for those two boys upstairs tonight, Lord, that they get an earful, be able to come back and hear the word of God often. Lord, please help us now in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have a good night. Let's make sure we get a record of those boys when they come out and marry that they know their addresses and stuff.